Hello everyone, it's Wednesday, time for a little Wisdom Wednesday. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend and enjoyed some time with family, if you were able to do so, and uh, were able to work in a little gratitude work. Hopefully you're continuing to do some of that work. As the week has progressed, I'm seeing more and more folks concerned with the holiday season and the fact that we're seeing the days get a little bit shorter and perhaps increasing anxiety and depression type symptoms. Certainly we're all very fatigued with our lives and status at this point with the COVID out there and we're anxiously awaiting the vaccine and hopefully we'll be able to start to see some of that rolling out fairly soon. And we'll be happy to kind of keep you up on that information. But I thought today I would talk a little bit about anxiety and depression. And I really think that those are sort of two sides of the same coin in that they often travel together. And looking at that and this season where the days are shorter and we're eating sort of a little bit differently because it's the holidays and we're home and we start to see a lot of this pile on and more and more creation of anxiety and depression and and just kind of thought I'd walk you through a little bit of that and and look at ways that we could possibly try to manage this without having to go straight to pharmaceuticals because there is a lot we can do and I think a lot of that depends on understanding how does this happen and how does it occur and looking at three main areas that we have control over to some degree might be beneficial to you. So first of all, let's just look at nutrition. We know that as we tend to draw to more comfort food and more sugar during this season, what happens in the gut is that the gut bacteria tend to make chemicals that can leak into our system and these byproducts of sugar metabolism and disruption of the gut microbiome that leak into the system called lipopolysaccharides are very inflammatory to the brain. And as such, it can increase changes in neurotransmitters in the brain such that we have lower levels of those feel-good neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine. So first of all, as best you can with rare exceptions and mindfulness, I would encourage you during these days where there are not parties and family time to really try to make sure that you eat in a way that is going to be more beneficial to your overall health and wellness, which is obviously limiting sugars and processed foods, trying to do as much as you can to eat whole foods, and healthy foods. So good quality protein sources and lots of vegetables, particularly the leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables, trying to limit a lot of the sugary type foods and fruits. And then throwing in that alcohol. So we have to kind of be mindful of that as well. Uh, as you also look toward ways that you can try to manage anxiety and depression, the next thing would be just exercise. We know that exercise alone in some studies have shown to be as good, if not better, than Prozac. So that's interesting. And we know that really it doesn't take a whole lot. 30 minutes, three to five times a week in research has actually shown to improve mood and reduce anxiety and depression. And sometimes as little as 10 to 15 minute segments can be adequate for you. So even though the weather now is not all that great the last few days we do have those sunny days and if you must you know certainly get out there are larger areas and and centers even though i don't think the mall's a great place to necessarily go if you go early enough or later perhaps that could be a place that you could find a way to walk or just find a track somewhere just to walk if you find that getting on the streets is not um, going to be something that's viable for you so we've looked at a little bit about diet, nutrition, and exercise, very just superficially. And just lastly, before I kind of give you some other ideas, I'd like to just make sure that you know how important sleep is as far as anxiety and depression. 
it is truly research has shown that that for the most part that sleep is our sleep deprivation is involved in nearly all psychiatric disorders so sleep disruption is very critical and can be quite a problem where these just mild depression and anxiety symptoms are are present so sleep is vital and getting good sleep and we do have some control i know a lot of you may have just chronic sleep disorders but just making sure that you try to get to bed on time we've talked a little bit about doing using blue blocking glasses trying to just help your body getting that morning sunlight and then blocking that blue light later in the day can be very beneficial trying to stay off screens and trying to look at times of gratitude and times of quiet time and writing down meditation type things can be very valuable even using amino acids like L-theanine which are very calming GABA is very helpful at night just trying to just get into a pattern of good sleep hygiene and making sure that you optimize your sleep so these are things that we can do now one of the last things that I'd like to just visit about is for many people even if you're doing all these things you still may be struggling a little bit with anxiety and or depression so what we often will do before we go to medication is start a protocol that utilizes two amino acids that are building blocks for serotonin and dopamine helping your body create and enhance levels of serotonin and dopamine. And those two amino acids are 5-HTP or 5-hydroxytryptophan and tyrosine. So 5-hydroxytryptophan is the precursor or the building block for serotonin and tyrosine is the building block for dopamine. And these are fairly easy to take. They're both over the counter. I generally recommend that you start off with about 50 milligrams of 5-HTP a day and 500 milligrams of tyrosine a day, just once a day to get started, and making sure that you also add some B vitamins, in particular B6, and in particular the form of B6 that I recommend is called the P5P form, which is the pyridoxal 5-phosphate form of B6. And that's really important for a lot of things, but in particular for the formation of these neurotransmitters. If you would like more information, please let us know, but this is something that you can start and then build those levels up over time that may help create more of these neurotransmitters and bring some balance to mood and help calm anxiety as well as depression in enhancing these neurotransmitters in the brain. So I know that's a lot to, to uh, think about, but just know that we have some control about some of these things and this is a tough season. We're all struggling right now. I tend to be fairly flatlined as far as, as uh, really depression and anxiety is concerned, but I gotta say these, there are some days here that have been quite a struggle and uh, just I think it's just such a fatigue thing of really ready to get back in our lives and as we Hopefully, I'm not sure that we see fully the light at the end of the tunnel, but I think we're starting to maybe see some uh, slight glimmer. And uh, I'll try to keep you up to date on what's happening with the vaccines, but right now we don't have anything yet available and it's not likely that many of us will be uh, the, for the chosen ones for the first round of these vaccines anyway. And there's just still a lot of questions. Are they gonna be vaccines that we, uh, you don't, you won't be, get the disease. Will you get the disease and could you spread the disease even if you have the vaccine? Uh, how long will this, these antibodies last? There's just still a lot of questions there too. And uh, as time goes on, we will obviously gather this information. And as we get more information and more knowledge on these things, we'll try to pass those on. Hope you all have a great day. Happy Wednesday, till next week.